Welcome to Talk Folk Parents, the retrospective podcast where we talk about some of the amazing things happening in the world and telling our thoughts on it and the thoughts of how it reflects with our kids. This is Niels R.Y., a.k.a. You Bald-Headed Demon. <laughs> and I am joined with our co-host. Shannon, a.k.a. Shannon Smith, running back, University of Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> we got a very special episode today. We are going to talk about Wakanda forever. Black Panther Wakanda forever. This is going to be a fresh hot take. We just like ran out of the movie theater and Shannon and I are chomping at the bit to finally get a chance to talk about Wakanda forever. You all may notice if you're a member of the pop cult um, that uh, MF Jones, aka Mark Jones, aka Clyde Jones is not with us. Mark has yet to see Black Panther and we could not wait. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. So Sorry, said, Mark. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> we got to we got to talk. <sighs> so we send we send our regards to Mark. You know, Mark. I hope you're listening to this after the fact. And yeah, yeah, man. Sorry, brother. <laughs> we um, I mean, <laughs> what, no, that's a lie. We didn't try. No, <laughs> we didn't. No, not at all. All right. So before we jump into the episode at hand, we actually got some mail. And I shouldn't say actually, because like it's a thing that happens all the time. Hint, hint, wink, wink. So one of the letters we got was from Ryan from Boston. And Shannon, Ryan, just to summarize his email, he was upset at our takes in the top five scary movie monsters episode. He specifically was like, we did Leatherface dirty. He said Leatherface should got a lot more cream than we gave him especially because the fact that Leatherface was based on a real character. He also mentioned that The Strangers from the movie The Strangers is something worth noting. And I, and I agree, That's, that was a great call. And yeah. then he said on the top of his list, he mentioned the Event Horizon ship from Event Horizon. And you know what, Ryan? I, I still feel how I feel about Leatherface, but you know what? Yeah. Shout out to the ship from Event Horizon. Great call, brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great call. Yeah. And I, uh, and and no, I, I gotta say, yeah, as you mentioned, the strangers that was one. It didn't come to mind, and I think it's probably because I suppressed it so long. From, <laughs> <laughs> because I remember that when I was younger and I saw that it shook me. Because of all the stuff they did, their only explanation was they were like, "Why are you doing this to us?" It's because you were home, like. Bro, <laughs> like, come on now. That's, a, good, I, yo, that's, that's a scary movie. That's yeah. a good one. That is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, anyways, okay. So, Ryan, sorry, but you know what? We said what we said and we meant it. But here, you got, you got your chance. We shared a little bit more about Leatherface. So, there you have it. We also got another letter, and this is from Liz. Liz essentially shared that she agrees with your boy that Avatar straight up ripped off Fern Gully. And I just want to say thank you, Liz. Thank you and thank you kindly. Shannon, this was on the uh, Our Mutual Friend episode that you weren't on, but did you have any thoughts around Fern Gully and Avatar or any of the other things we discussed on that episode? Nah, I mean, only only difference was the uh, the CGI budget. Outside of that, they were the same movie. Because <laughs> we all know what Avatar probably had like a $70 million budget for just CG, like not even talking about paying the actors. Uh, yes. So yeah, yeah, it was, it, it was Fern Gully with a very meaty CG budget. <laughs> and, and I agree, obviously, as you know, <laughs> the only thing I will say, so this is one of my, you know, theories, one of my takes that I've said probably since the beginning of Pop Cult Parent, which is this, when you combine space with anything, it essentially makes it better. When you combine space with brownies, you get cosmic brownies. Cosmic brownies are better than regular brownies, supposedly. When you combine space with ninjas, you get Jedis. So there's just a thought process. When you combine space with anything, space with basketball, you get Space Jam. When you combine space with anything, it becomes a better product. So when you combine space with Fern Gully, you get a billion dollar movie. <laughs> you get one of the most sold movies ever. I say that not to say that Avatar is a great thing. 
I say that to say Fern Gully was that good, y'all. Fern Gully was that good. All they did was make space Fern Gully, and it became one of the biggest selling movies ever. So that's all I'll say. Cool. We're ready to move on. I know if you want to say anything. Oh, no, 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 Fern no. Gully. I'm over, I'm over here. <laughs> I'm over here just nodding. I can't be seen, but I'm like nodding. I'm like, that is true. That is true. They just added space to it. And and again, yeah. If you just think about it, I'm like, yeah, Fern, Fern Gully, great. What about Fern Gully in space? Mm-hmm. Tell me more. <laughs> With River Panthers. Yes, yeah. that's that's essentially it. James Cameron. Oh man. Anyways, okay. So now, now to the matter at hand, we are going to talk about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So, Shannon, I thought it makes sense to go over a little bit of the history just to give folks the context of of the movie and some of the things that were shared in the movie. Before we do that, spoiler warnings. If you are here and you have not seen Black Panther Wakanda forever, we are going to spoil the mess out of this. So please either turn, turn the podcast off, go watch it and come back, or be okay that we're going to spoil everything for you. But we are going to go in. It is what it is. Okay. We talking the we talking the movie, the themes, the post credit scenes, like so, I, like all of that. Like we we might even spoil something about the credits. Like maybe there was somebody who was the executive producer that was a surprise. I don't know. But <laughs> if you don't want that, then come on back when you're ready. Okay, so a bit about the history. First and foremost, Namor. I'm sure a lot of you all have questions about Namor. I actually go in depth about Namor's history in the Our Mutual Friend episode 48. So if you want to hear more about that, just tune in on that episode. What I will say about Namor is that the movie Namor and the comic book Namor have some subtle differences. One is that Namor in the comic book is from Atlantis. He is a mutant, but he's from Atlantis. Atlantis is, you know, the same Atlantis as Aquaman's Atlantis. I'm assuming that's part of the reason they didn't want to go for it. And Namor is, they don't really tell you what Namor is like ethnicity wise in the comic books, but it's assumed that he's Asian. So what they did was in the, in the movies, they based it out of Mayan culture. They, Talokan, I believe is the name of the city. Like it has a lot of like Mayan emphasis. And of course, if you've seen the movie, the, the stories around how the Mayan people use like their religious leader to like find the heart shaped herbs and and that's how they ended up in the water and that's how namor became one of the first mutants namor is very old though like in the movies he was old in the comic books namor is old he's one of the oldest marvel characters ever and pretty much the last thing i'll say about namor in general is that they like how he fights how strong he is how durable he is that is like on par with how he is in comic books that's how much of a badass Namor is in comic books. So, like, if you were wondering, like, did they overpower him? Did they underpower him? To me, my personal opinion, he, like, that was extremely accurate. Like, extremely accurate of what you can expect from Namor in the comic book. So, like, yes, he's that much of a badass. And he is that hard to beat. And, like, there's probably only a few people in the Marvel Universe that can beat him one-on-one. That's just what it is. Even though he's arrogant as a mess in the comics and potentially annoying or charismatic, depending on whatever you're reading, he's a badass to be. So that's it on Namor. Shane, you want to say anything about that? Uh, no, I mean, what what I was looking at, he's, I mean, he's basically, I, I can't even think, like just the combinations of, of power, strength, speed, all of these types of things. Because like power, strength-wise, he's like Hulk or stronger in water, and really realistically on land as long as he's sort of like close-ish to water uh so yeah uh and I know we'll get into it but bruh I have I have never I like I knew of Namor Submariner you know as it was Mm -hmm. as it was called and I knew the stuff but bruh I had never seen him obviously on the screen or even in any of the cartoon movies or anything so to see the stuff he did like I mean, he's turning on a dime, like, you know, any, any Tesla, Ferrari or whatever, like he, he, he goes from zero to 60 faster than that turns on a dime. Like, yeah, like dude. Yeah. Dude couldn't be beat. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. He's like in water. He's Superman pretty much. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. All right. A couple other things worth noting. So 
in the comic books, you may you may know this, you may not know this, but Wakanda actually gets flooded in the comic books. It was a lot worse than what was in the movie. Like the entire country of Wakanda gets flooded by Namor and that hundreds of thousands of people die. So we got a little uh, less, a more subtle version of that than what was in the comic books. So that's another thing that was in there as well. Shuri, I'm sure everybody knows this at this point, but Shuri actually does become Black Panther in the comic books. This happens during the Reginald Hudson run. And Namor is actually involved in the story of when Shuri becomes Black Panther. I, if memory serves me right, T'Challa is like knocked out. I think everybody thinks he's dead. And a Storm tells Shuri to become Black Panther because I think they're married at that point. And so that's how Shuri like earns the title. She like does all the stuff. She does the like fight. She takes the heart-shaped herb and she becomes the Black Panther. So again, that's very, that's comic book accurate. Few more. One, Riri Williams. That is a character. She was written by BMB, Brian Michael Bendis. You may remember Brian Michael Bendis being mentioned if you are an old school pop called Parenthead because I mentioned him in like our second episode when we talked about um, Into the Spider-Verse because he was the same writer that created Miles Morales. So yes, this white guy makes a whole bunch of dope black <laughs> characters for Marvel. So, <laughs> yes, thank you, BMB. Uh-huh. So Riri is actually 15 when she's in MIT and Tony Stark is alive when she is doing her thing. He's so impressed with her that he like takes her under his wing because she like essentially built an Iron Man suit from scraps. And yeah, she's a, she's ridiculously smart. Funny enough, like a lot of what you saw in Sherry in the original Black Panther movie reminded me a lot of Riri Williams in the comic books. So There might have been some shout outs and stuff going on there. I just want to comment on that with Riri. And I mean, I I know we're we're sort of talking history, but I just want to mention her, you know, current in the movie. Something that really impressed me and I loved was they focused so much on her intelligence and those things that it was, you know, like, because I think sometimes the first thought might be, oh, so she's a black woman, Iron Man. And like that's, you know, and, and so you want to focus on the suit she can make and the action and this and that. And yeah, they did some of that, but I, I think there was just such an amazing thing that they focused on, on this, this young black girl, you know, it was like hashtag black girl magic, you know, mm-hmm. but they, they focused so much on her intelligence and how she was able to solve these problems, create these things, you know, just all of this. And I thought that was just pretty, you know, definitely pretty dope. Yeah. And they didn't emphasize her race yeah. or her gender. Mm-hmm. They emphasized her age. Mm-hmm. And like, that's pretty, do- Shannon, I didn't even think about that. That's pretty dope. It wasn't like the government was like this black girl mm-hmm. in MIT made this book. They're like this 19 year old MIT student made like this uh, vibranium detector. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's dope, man. Cause she was mm-hmm. that smart. Like yeah. it's, 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 you know, we don't gotta, we don't gotta like diminish her for any reason. Like she's a super genius. And she impressed Shuri. Do you know how hard that is? Like, Bruce yeah. Banner couldn't impress Shuri with their intelligence. So, yeah. exactly. So, a couple other things. Oh, one other thing, history-wise. Midnight Angels. So, if you remember, Okoye and um, Aneka get suits made with vibranium that are, like, super te- technological advanced, and they're called, the nicknames are called the Midnight Angel Suits. That's actually a thing. That was in ta Coates run of the Black Panther. And it was originally Aneka and Ayo who were the Midnight Angels. What happened was like they were members of the Dora Milaje. They were upset with how T'Challa was running the country. And they said, you know what? We're done. We're not Dora Milaje's anymore. We're keeping this tech though. And we're going to become the vigilantes of Wakanda. So they are essentially running around Wakanda being Batman. <laughs> so they had they had these dope suits. They're Dora Milaje, so they're one of some of the most skilled fighters in the world. And they were just like solving or like fighting crime throughout the country of Wakanda. If that isn't enough to get you to read the Ta-Nehisi Coates run of Black mm-hmm. Panther, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> so it's that good. So oh, that's a little bit of the history of some of the things that were in the comic books that were 
in the movie. Shannon, anything you wanted to say about that? No, no, I'm uh, so uh, well, 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 we'll mention this because since we are mentioning history, I think we'll get into this a little more. I know we've been mentioning more so history of the characters and comics. I just want to say history wise, what an amazing job they did in terms of representing why well, is it, it is escaping me now. Is it actually where Namor is from? Uh, what is it? Uh, Talokan. Yeah, Talokan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, you know, obviously Talokan doesn't exactly exist, but I, mm. I just love the way that they put together what would be considered a Mesoamerican culture. Like you see those aspects of like Mayan, Incan, all of these things. And I mean, that's, you know, that's not part of my identity, but I think it's safe to say they did an amazing job representing, like there was nothing that was like disrespectful, making a, you know, making some mockery of culture or something like that. But anyway, yes, just history wise, I'm like, I love doing that because I feel like there's actually things that I saw happening that I'm like, oh, this is similar to like what I've seen in textbook, you know, or anything like that. And, and yet they were able to fuse it into, you know, what would be current day or, or like future I don't know if a term exists. I know we, like for us, we have Afrofuturism, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of, and so I don't know if there's something that's like Mesoamerican futurism, but if there is like this- It's about this, to be one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's about to exist, whatever yeah. that term is. And yep. and I'm just going to throw, throw this part in there. When we see where Namor is from, we're actually seeing the, the thing. I remember there was a game that you might remember that they were playing it's like basically you try to like get the ball through this like metal ring and i'm like and i think it's called pits uh is it called pits i think i think that's what it's called but like in terms of uh what we've seen in the books and everything i think it's actually called pits or something like that Mm -hmm. and i'm like that is again i have seen that in the textbooks like that is you know like even going back to that that was like one of the earliest team games that was ever created. And they get that from Mesoamerican culture. As you can see, I was just so excited about the history aspect there of merging, I guess, what is real to like this sort of futurism piece. It's amazing. Dope. So yeah. dope. It was so <laughs> dope. Yes. I forgot about that. Yes. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So Shannon, we talked a little bit about the history. Let's talk about the movie itself. I know you've been chomping at the bit. So have I. What did you think of this movie? I thought it was Okay. Uh, <laughs> just yo, yo, uh, I was, I was, I was. You I, almost I, got me for a second. <laughs> I, I was gonna be like, how, how long can I hold this and go on saying that? Nah, truly, this movie, I say movie, it was an experience. This entire mm. thing was an experience. So I'll even start. Let me, let me even say for a, a minute before even going into the movie. So. When we saw it, it was November the 11th. That was Veterans Day. Me and my wife had the day off. We put our child in daycare because his school was closed. So we're like, we're going to do this. We had a whole day planned for ourselves. Saw Wakanda Forever first thing in the morning. Had a nice lunch, all this stuff. So we knew the day could not go wrong. And we were correct. (laughs) (laughs) Like, so that's already excitement going into it. And then, yeah, the actual movie, like I said, Oh my God. It's like just the way it starts off, even they did such a job of merging basically real life or things that happen in real life to, to the movie. Because as we start the, the movie and there's Chadwick both, well, you know, at T'Challa's funeral, but yet as we're feeling sad for this character, there's no way that, that we're sort of separating the two. We're like, I'm feeling this sadness of loss for T'Challa and Black Panther and movie wise, but this is hitting home because it's, it's reawakening those feelings that I was literally feeling for Chadwick Boseman, the real life actor. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so just the way they did those things, just uh, amazing. Like they pulled at your heartstrings. Uh, I actually, uh, you know, sitting there, I I tried to be like comforting to my wife uh, because I could, I could see she was tearing up. That was just me trying to play big and bad. Like that was, (laughs) You know, I was feeling the same way and just tried to feel, try to be like, oh, it's her. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, You're a so good we, one, Shannon, because Shamel was sure enough comforting me. I was the one like, oh my God. <laughs> it smells like it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But yeah, so so again, you know, uh, before I go too too deep into those things, you know, just the question was just generally like, how how did I feel about it? What were my thoughts? Amazing movie. It was an experience. 
it tied so much in so much happened in this movie like for this literal movie but for the future of the mcu as well like you know introducing certain characters that we'll get into a little later uh mm-hmm. introducing some characters introducing some concepts they said the m word i don't know if if Maybe that's been said once before, but it hasn't really been said. The M word being mutant, and it was just mm-hmm. blatant. <laughs> like Namor said, I'm a mutant. And, you know, like we know how that battle has been for like years because we wanted to use terms like what enhanced individuals or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And now they're finally like, yo, we can do this now. Like we're going there. Meta humans. Sorry. Meta humans is my favorite one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Meta humans. <laughs> And so now they're like, oh, we're going there now. We ain't got to, we ain't got to, you know, bite our tongue. Like, yeah, we're saying mutants because you know what's going to happen in a couple of years. Just go ahead and get your money ready. So yeah, again, so much happened in the movie. Emotional. I loved it. It was an experience. And, and, you know, because I'm cheap, I feel like, man, like there should be something that you do that you're able to see this again. Uh, and it's, and, and it is, it's called pay for it. Go to the theater, yeah. pay, see it again. <laughs> Uh, all right so i know this is like you know in old school pop called parent this is a question that we would ask at the end of this movie or at the end of the episode but i'm asking you now are you gonna take your son to go watch wakanda forever i'm i mean i'm not yet uh and i mean mm-hmm. and i say that because my son is four years old mm-hmm. uh, and i'm seeing like even when he watches an easy cartoon movie that's like pg or something I feel like I start seeing little things like, oh, you're getting a little more aggressive, you know, so so you're not exactly ready to see, you know, Namor and, you know, get stabbed and, and do all this type of stuff. So, you know, not really it's like, yeah, it. traumatize your son and watch Black Panther again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or just or just hold off. Yeah, I, that's, I'm pretty sure I'm going to traumatize my son because I might take him. I might take him <laughs> to go watch this. Yeah. So what I thought. Yeah, clearly I liked it, obviously. It, like, this was a great movie. I know we're, it's too fresh to, to start ranking movies like that, but I'm going to try anyway. I personally think if this wasn't the best movie this phase, it was, it was on par or right behind Shang-Chi. I still think Shang-Chi is like top. Shang-Chi top 10. Old time and Marvel, in my opinion. Shang-Chi was amazing. But this movie was special, man. It was a breath of fresh air from what we've been getting from Marvel recently. Like, this this came at the perfect time. And, I mean, I just want to give a big shout out to Ryan Coogler. He did the impossible. Like, this man, within two, so two years ago, he finds out that Chadwick Boseman passes away. He has to rewrite, I don't know how far in he was writing the script, but he has to rewrite it seems to me he had probably had to rewrite the entire story because everything in that movie was like the child is dead. So he had to rewrite an entire script two years before it came out. He had, and in the movie, he had to mourn the original Black Panther. He had to introduce some pivotal characters and an entire culture, an entire world within the world and lastly, he had to make an origin story for a superhero. He had to do all that in one movie. So at any point, if you have criticism on like, oh, well, it seemed kind of rushed here. It seemed like, you know, there wasn't enough break to go from this scene to that scene. And like, you couldn't really like get the timing wise. That's because this man had to do the impossible. He had to do three heavy things in one and had to do it in less than three hours. Like, and it was still great. Like, yeah. what? What? That does not happen. I yeah. don't know how he did it. Because like, and at the same time, you got to think, this guy was still mourning Chadwick. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he was, he's still crying about Chadwick. Like, and so like the fact that he being the leader, being the person who wrote the story, being the person who was directing it, it had to lead all those other people who are going through similar experiences. And then they made this respect. Mm-hmm. I have the utmost respect to Ryan Coogler. And Marvel, I don't know what y'all need to do. Y'all got to give that man everything he wants so he can stay around the MCU for as long as possible. Because after this, he don't really need the MCU anymore. He can do whatever he wants. I'm sure any studio would be like, we would love to help produce whatever original stuff you have. Because this man has the Midas touch. Like, I am a legit fan now. 
I will watch anything this man makes because he has just shown me he can do the impossible. And sorry, not to interrupt you, but I just want to say, like you're saying, yes, doing the impossible and knocking it out the park, because that's what gets me. Sometimes you see something like that happen and you and you can tell you're like, hey, you did a pretty good job here to have had all those obstacles. You did a pretty good job. Like, you know, it wasn't perfect, but, you know, I'm taking that into account and I'm I'm not going to grade you as harsh. And it's like, no, this guy knocked it out the park. You know, just amazing. There is no, oh, because of these obstacles. I mean, all this does is just add to his legend. Like, like this is an amazing movie that had you had seven years to make it, we would have been like, yeah, yeah, this is still an amazing movie. But you rescripted it all of this two years. And yeah, that's unheard of, unfathomable. Unheard of. <laughs> so, Shannon, we clearly would like the movie. Let's talk about some of our favorite scenes and quotes. So I'll jump in. There's a few I've been with. I've had a few quotes that have just been living in my head that I mm. wanted to pop off. So a few was from Sherry. Sherry, by the way, I forgot what the sister's name is. Letitia Wright. Letitia Wright, you in here now. This is like, you got it. Like, I ain't, ain't nobody doubting you, Letitia. You are, you are an actress. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> this is your job. I don't know if you were dabbling. And like, maybe I will um, go be a doctor or a lawyer. No, ma'am, you are an actress now. You, that is, that is your profession from now until you pass away. Mm-hmm. You are an actress. You are an actress. You acted up in this movie. Anyways, so here are some, here's some of my quotes. So Sherry had a quote. I think it was like, if I sit and think of my brother for too long, then it won't be just these clothes that I burn. It will be the world and everyone in it sheesh that was like a punch in the face and Namor heard it and then used those words to be like yo let's burn the world together (laughs) flames Mm -hmm. unintended (laughs) (laughs) Namor had another quote which was only the most broken people can be great leaders and I was like bars like yes Namor there was Riri Riri had a quote this was just hilarious because I would have said the exact same thing if I was in her shoes. They were like captured. She was like, where's Black Panther? Shuri was like, no, the Black Panther is a relic, doesn't exist anymore. And she said, so y'all stop having Black Panthers when I get kidnapped? Like, yep. Yeah, that was yep that's how I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. I got two more for you. Killmonger, he said, so, oh, okay. I guess we got to talk about this. Yeah. Shuri gets the heart shape or we're not going in chronological order or nothing whatever y'all y'all just just go with us shuri takes the heart shape herb and the person that she sees none of the other previous black panthers not her brother even though i guess we all kind of know why we could expect to not see her brother not her grandfather not even her mother she sees najaka aka killmonger sitting on the throne and saying like you wanted me like when you took the heart shape herb you of all your ancestors of everyone who passed away i'm the person you reached out to because you took the heart shape herb for vengeance like your motivation was vengeance and so he leaves her with a question he says are you going to be noble like your brother or take care of business like me and they don't give an answer until the end of the movie Bruh, that was, in, in case you were wondering what one of my favorite scenes was, Shannon, that was it. That yeah. was one of my favorite scenes. And, and, and let's be real. May, you know, we can see her answer change, but her, she's like, I don't have an answer. Let's be real. Her answer in that moment, I'm going to take care of business. That was her answer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. She was like, nah, I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> and she even picked um, Killmonger's suit. Like she passed like two Black Panther suits and went straight for the Killmonger suit. So like she made her decision. My all-time favorite quote though, of course, is from my favorite character, Umbaku. <laughs> Umbaku had lines in this movie, man. Mm-hmm. Umbaku stole the movie, in my opinion. Well, name no, Namor stole the movie. Umbaku was a close second, though, in my opinion. He says, his people do not call him general or king. They call him Kuku clan, the feather serpent's god. Killing him will risk eternal 
war. And then like later on, he's like, oh, you don't think we have books in Jabari land? <laughs> Yo, he did. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. I just. Oh. No, no. That's, <laughs> and, and I'm like, yeah, that was that was that was hilarious. Um, and even even stemming from that, like his, you know, his understanding and reasoning of like killing him is not going to be like, oh, look, Wakanda won. Like that's going to wage a war that will essentially last forever because we've killed their god like bruh like so and like they're never going to stop yeah. after that like that's like that gives them all the motivation in the world to do everything they can to kill wakanda if namor dies which i didn't think about until i heard that and i was like that makes so much sense that's exactly mm-hmm. what they would do yeah and i gotta say just right before i get into to mine my favorite uh scenes uh this this movie had I, I would say Shuri and Mbaku. It has some of the most sort of character development from like previous movies that I think that I've ever seen. Like like Mbaku, you know, we all remember him from the very first Black Panther, and then we see things changing and how it's like you know he's like maybe I don't like you that much, but I'm I'm still down to help Wakanda and our land and this and that. And till he became this person that was I feel like just so wise in terms of like this is what's going to happen. And also, I'm wise enough to ask, you know, he he told her, well, oh, I'm sorry, the line that he said to Shuri about, she was saying, oh, even if I am a, a child who scoffs at tradition, and he's like, you've been through so much tragedy that you are no longer a child. Some, something mm-hmm. in that realm, yeah. you know. But I mentioned that, that, that he went from through all of this and still was someone wise enough to be like, let me ask this person for advice, you know. Uh, and so that, that's, that's just heavy yeah man seriously yeah so I, i'm like i love his development just throughout these movies so for me some of my favorite scenes let's be real at the beginning the opening mm-hmm. scene the very opening scene it's no warning it's just okay i don't know it's like what light turns on and boom everybody's rushing around they're like you know sure he's trying to say okay what is the the probability that this will work or whatever and it's you know 20 something percent and just everybody's rushing around. And then it says, you know, T'Challa's heart rate is dropping. It is this low. It, and just the way to be like, the movie is starting with them just in this rush state. Like, let's try to try to help them. Let's figure this out. And, and so you see that acting happening already because Shuri, Queen Ramonda, you know, she comes in and tells her, you know, your brother is with the ancestors now. And just that that cry of pain that she lets out and just and there was a line that she said it said something like he suffered in silence for so long Mm -hmm. and then finally when he asked me to help I like I could not help him and obviously if you're a Black Panther fan if you know anything about you know Black Panther and life that has happened in the last couple years you know that was basically a double entendre like Mm -hmm. because that is exactly what happened with Chadwick Boseman the actor as well to be like you know he had cancer and and none of us knew about it until really until he died yeah until he Mm -hmm. died because we found out and so to be like I'm sure he had a, a close circle of people that he trusted and told and things like that but outside of that it is he essentially suffered in silence for so long I'm just like ooh, like that hit and so that yeah, was, man. yeah, that was, that was like one of my, you know, like I said, favorite scenes because it already, you know, it pulled at the heartstrings and similar to what I was saying before is that piece of some of this happened in real life and, you know, obviously some of the movie. And so when you're sitting there, you're, you're mourning him, there's no way that you're not making that connection and also being like those feelings of sadness for losing Chadwick Boseman is, is they're just one in the same here, just bouncing back and forth. So Oh, yeah. Yeah, so like <laughs> for real. Like, honestly, one one that was like I cried like four times in this movie. That was definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. And the power of that scene, Shannon, to your to to what you're saying is like we were mourning, like we were mourning Chadwick and T'Challa mm-hmm. at the same time. And like when you see Sherry cry, it's like, yo, I don't know if she was acting. Like mm-hmm. she either is just a phenomenal actress, which, you know, she, she just might be. Or she was like, this is exactly what I did when I found out Chadwick died. Like, what you're seeing is exactly what I felt when Chadwick dies. I'm just showing it for you all for this movie. Because I felt it. 
I felt like that mm-hmm. felt so real. And that's how I felt. Like it was just like it was sad, man. It was really sad. So yeah, thank you. That that definitely, I think that shows the the gift of uh, Ryan Krugler because like he had to help us all mourn. Chadwick and help us move on at the same time. So yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Another, I'll just I'll just briefly mention it, but it was uh, just because I mentioned it earlier when they said the M word mutant, like that was just, <laughs> just, just in that when Namor mentioned that, uh, you know, just saying, you know, I was, uh, I was a mutant and this and that. And if I'm not mistaken, is he, is he considered like comic book wise, is he considered like the first mutant or? Yeah. yeah. So it's always tricky with Namor or mutants in general. So Namor, there's like two, two ways. And I'll try to be quick. Mm-hmm. Namor is some folks consider Namor the first mutant, but like it's either two ways that you can consider him the first mutant. Either he's the first mutant that appeared in comic books because of how old he is, or he's the first mutant that like exists in Marvel. Technically, I think Avan Sir, aka Apocalypse, yeah. is considered the first mutant, but you can even like hear some remarks that like there was actually a mutant before Apocalypse. So like, it gets a little tricky. All that means, all that, like, all you should take away from that is that Namor is one of the oldest mutants out there. Like, Mm -hmm. period. He may be the first one, but he is one of the oldest ones out there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, and and so with that, like, even as it's sort of playing off of that, I think that's going to be pretty dope because again, I don't think, and, and like, I'm trying to run through my head, but I don't know if it has been said yet, like if mutant has been said yet. So, so in, in terms of Marvel movies and so. It has in the MCU okay. though. Okay. There's okay. only been one time they mentioned mutant beforehand. And that was in Miss Marvel, the end of Miss, the last episode True. of Miss Marvel. Yeah. He's like mutation. And then you hear the nineties yeah. X-Men <laughs> cartoon <laughs> song. <in the> <laughs> But okay. like movie wise, this was the first one we got. Yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah. So movie wise. And so, again, I see a parallel there where, I mean, if he's, you know, it's arguable, but, you know, possibly say like first mutant, you know, comic wise, this and that. And essentially he's going to be the first mutant movie wise. So he's like, you know, ushering in this yep. whole new level channel of mutants and everything like that. Uh, you know, and, and we can and we can say that, like, I mean, we know Professor X was in Multiverse of Madness, but it wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, I think still mutant wasn't mentioned there. Uh, nope and not in our universe anyway so yeah yeah true <laughs> so again I, I love that because of what that means like you know we're going to get x-men sometime in the future we're going to get all these other characters that are, that are mutants and everything so love that i'll say the i'm gonna just go ahead and jump into this because i feel like i've been dancing around it all night uh so <laughs> exploring talukan uh yeah man that was one of my favorite <laughs> scenes like that that place is beautiful it's uh mm-hmm. you know i mean it's underwater so uh you know i won't be visiting there anytime soon but just truly it was beautiful because my feeling thought and hope maybe is the same way that we all as black people felt about wakanda seeing that i would hope those of mesoamerican latinx heritage things like that i I'm I'm thinking, hoping that maybe they feel that way about Talokan, like just mm-hmm. uh, like how it merges, you know, that uh, culture, uh, just how beautiful it is. It is its own place, not beholden, not beholden to anyone else, has, you know, these resources, and it's just this whole uh, world kingdom, you know, within itself. So I love seeing that. And even as we make a call back here, so I listen to the Wakanda Forever soundtrack, like a couple of days or you know so mm-hmm. uh before and so there's a song on there i think it's called con las brisas and it's it's just a calming song or whatever but but this song it's the same song that they played when she was exploring uh when shuri was exploring uh talukan when i heard that song it, it shows you what imagery when you actually see something versus you know just hearing something how they might not be a full picture until they merge because when I heard that song, I was like, uh, it's a, eh, it's a whatever song. I'm like, I'm actually sort of not feeling this. And now mm-hmm. every single time I hear that song, I see Talukan and I'm like, this calming song is one of the most fire tracks on this whole soundtrack. <laughs> 
So it just shows that merge. But yeah, yeah. So so uh just exploring Talokan period. I just again uh I just thought this that's just a beautiful place. I'm glad they went with that, not Atlantis. Uh, it makes Atlantis look like a gentrified uh, you know, <laughs> just makes Bruh, but yeah, I, I gotta say it was beautiful. It mm-hmm. was beautiful, like the when Namor said he brought the sun to his people, mm-hmm. and you see like the it's like a techno pyramid like thing that they had going on and like the light coming out of it which i think was supposed to be their vibranium i'm not even Mm -hmm. sure i'm pretty sure it was their vibranium i was like yeah he's gonna kill everybody up there to protect this i was like this place is beautiful Mm -hmm. i was like now he's everybody gonna get got so he can protect this did you notice though shannon like the people his people when they're in the water they're like normal skin tone. They look like regular humans. Mm-hmm. But when they get out of the water, that's when you see the blue skin. That's yeah. when you kind of like see them seem like fish people. But in the water, like when the, the little kids were swimming up to Sherry, they just look like regular kids. Like just yeah, swimming yeah. in the water. Did you notice yeah. that at all? Yeah. Yeah. No, I noticed that. Uh, another thing I noticed was uh, me and my wife were talking about it the the face mask thing that that basically everyone has to wear except for namor it was it was interesting because so namor's people they have to wear it on the land but then one of them put it on shuri so she could wear it uh in the water and we were just like wait so it just works both ways is is it like a car and it's like like i hit eco mode versus sport mode like that's what happened (laughs) but we, we like laugh about that because it was just like Oh, that same mask. You just you just click a button and then now it's like, okay, it's meant to, to keep you safe on the water versus keep you safe on land. Like eco versus sport mode. So all right. <laughs> great, great tech they got over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no. I, I love that y'all. That's ridiculous. I love that job. <laughs> Whatever. That's okay. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Good job, you and Julie. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so uh and one of one of my last uh because I mentioned this because there's a certain reveal, but I think we're going to get into that a little later. So I won't yeah, we're going to get into that a little okay, later. Yeah. Okay, so I won't say that as one of my uh, one of my favorites. Uh, my lastly, what I'll say here is, yeah, that that moment of Shuri realizing that her and Killmonger were so similar, I think that was a powerful scene. And even you know when all of this went down, uh, one like, yeah, the reveal of Killmonger, dope uh for him to turn around like what did he say hey little cuz or something like yeah. that <laughs> hey cuz something like that yep mm-hmm. yeah and so uh great to have uh great to have michael b jordan uh back in here i was definitely hoping he would be in some form or manner but the way he broke down her family as well being like your dad he was a hypocrite your brother he was too noble so and so was you know uh you know like they and even the way he said your daddy he would have killed that scientist. He did it to his mm-hmm. own brother. <laughs> like, and like, it's like, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all she could do was sit there with and like cry because it's like, you talking about my daddy, my brother, <laughs> and, and you not wrong, but man, like don't do <laughs> Yeah, he was kind of going in, but it's like, hey, he ain't wrong. Yeah, <laughs> he ain't yeah. wrong. And so, and I think even with her, you know, you, you, you mentioned the costume, but to me, maybe it was just, thinking about it too much or maybe not but it seems like especially towards towards the end it looks like you could really see in her costume like yes it had some of that gold trim and things like that that killmonger had but still like the black and maybe a couple pieces of silver like uh t'challa's so it it just shows Mm. that sort of what exists there and she's like i am basically i'm part of killmonger i'm part of t'challa like in terms of how Mm. i'm you know how I'm moving and things like that and you can see it in the costume which I'm like it's pretty dope because yeah she you know we'll see how she goes in the future but yeah she she's in that piece now where she's like I'm doing some noble things like my brother I don't think she's gonna completely be like him and I'm doing some stuff getting it done you know like like Killmonger but I don't think she's gonna be completely like either one of those you know well oh one one thing we should talk about though Mm -hmm. is that fight scene between Black Panther and Namor like yes yeah so the action in this movie was phenomenal like there was great fight scenes there was a lot more fight scenes than the first Black Panther 
and they were great. And like we saw both of these countries show that no one can light a candle to either of them. Like they would be a problem for anybody. But that last fight scene, because you never really see Shuri as a fighter. Like you've never like seen Shuri fight until this. Like, I mean, she's always used her tech as like Mm -hmm. her like defense, but you never really see her like go in. And this shows you not. Shuri knows how to fight. Yeah. If you are royalty in Wakanda, you have been fighting your whole life. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't have been a surprise to any of us that Shuri can like throw down and you know, also being a recipient of the heart shape herb probably helped as well too. But Namor, that was a fight. Yeah. And they were like ruthless. Like they were like, one of us is going to die. <laughs> yeah. Like they were going in. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, that's, and, and yeah, that was really the outcome. Like, I mean, luckily, uh, I mean, that was really the thought of the outcome because yeah, luckily, I mean, it didn't necessarily end that way, but that was the way it was headed. No one was like, my plan is to fight you until you quit or until you surrender. It was like, no, like, yeah, we're fighting. One of us is not going to walk away. Maybe neither one of us walks away, but if I die, it's because I died killing you, you know? Yep. <laughs> one of us is going to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that scene, sheesh. It was a, it was a great fight scene. It was yeah. well, actually, I would throw out there, I'll either, one of the best fight scenes, again, Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi's up 10. <laughs> so outside of that it's one of the best fight scenes i've seen in this uh in this uh phase so yeah and yeah. And, it, and it it does have me wondering how they will do going forward because she like you know she cut off one of his ankle wings and and i'm like so is that gonna affect them in the future is it just gonna grow back and so in the future we can just pretend it didn't happen is it gonna have an effect on him you know so Bruh, know. he is a what 500 year old mutant mm. like shannon that's gonna grow back <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be fine i didn't see him limping or nothing he's it's- gonna be okay <laughs> oh that's hilarious so we got two distinct cultures here i think it will be interesting for the pop cult for us to kind of just talk about some of the similarities maybe some of the subtle differences between Talakan and wakanda so was there any stuff that you that you saw that came up for you so much both Mm -hmm. as we break it down at the end of the day both want to protect their people and their resources you know and everything and they're not well sorry i misspoke i was about to say and they're not trying to go to war with people sorry my fault talokan uh (laughs) yeah they they definitely trying to do that yeah yeah that's that's, that's exactly what they want the action yeah yeah but but you know at the end of the day both of them, they, they're choosing their paths or whatever with their people in mind. So Talokan is like, yeah, I want to burn down the world or whatever. And it's because I know if I don't burn down the world, they're going to come after my people. I can't have that happening. Uh, Wakanda, I mean, you know, they, they like sort of hid, hid in the background for so long. Now they decided to, okay, we're going to let the world see us, but because we still want to be able to protect our people and we think we can do stuff that can even make the world better. But at the end of the day, they, they both just want to protect their people. I mean, the, the visual standpoint, both mm-hmm. beautiful places, uh, Wakanda and Talokan. Uh, again, I was mentioning uh, Mesoamerican futurism. I'm going to keep saying that till it becomes a thing, unless yeah. there's already something. <laughs> as well as, um, I'm sure between now and the end of the podcast, we're going to think of an, a name for Mesotech. Yeah. Meso song. <laughs> we're, we'll, 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 we'll work on it, y'all. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, our uh, Afrofuturism, even some of the other things, I think as as strong as we feel about, you know, the Wakanda forever as we cross, uh, you know, our right arm over our chest and then our left arm over that, you know, for Wakanda, I think there's going to be many, many people, Latinx culture that are doing essentially the hand signal. <laughs> the yeah. Hand signal. Yeah. That, did you, uh, did you, did you catch what this was? Shit. Uh, y'all can't see me, Paul Cole, but I'm literally... <laughs> looking at Shannon and doing the uh the hand gesture. Did you catch like a, what that was? A ball type thing, but no. What when Namor sits down on the throne, his throne is made out of a giant shark's teeth. Oh. And so when you see the hands come together, it looks the same as the shark's mouth that is made of the throne. So it's essentially saying like this is our seat of power. So like, you know, it was, that's that's what I took from it anyway. So I thought that was dope. Yeah, no, yeah this is dope. a dope 
Like Wakanda Forever is dope, but this little hand joint, yeah, joint was fire too. <laughs> yeah, and I and I think that's and even just thinking because I you know I know how we are like especially as black people as many of us were doing the Wakanda you know right right over left and everything. I think there's going to be plenty of plenty of people who are you know Latinx culture that are going to be doing that hand signal, and I think it's just going to be dope that in real life, as we're you know messing around. We're going to be crossing paths. Like I'm crossing Wakanda, you doing uh, Talokan, mm-hmm. and us being like, ah, oh, that's funny. And like, like we're, we're allies. But I think it's going to be a little bit of something where we're like, you know, like allies thinking about the movie being funny, but we're like, like, you know, because we know we, we got to be allies in real life too, you know, like looking yeah. out for each other as, uh, as, as, uh, as we would be called minorities. <laughs> our poor Afro Latino brothers and sisters out there so confused at what they got to do now <laughs> there's, maybe there's like a like a i don't know they're gonna they're gonna have to figure something out it's gonna be a little confusing for them but yeah whatever yeah. y'all got two y'all got two you can do either or man that's, uh-huh. that's what we'll say yeah and then i think some of my last two sort of things where i'm saying they're you know there's there's similar cultures and everything uh you know both have they're essentially their hero that is their king and ruler at the you know at the same time so you know black panther being that while also being the king slash ruler of wakanda uh namor being their hero while at the same time being their like their god slash ruler uh you know so that's that's definitely pretty deep and and again you see the choices that they each have to make in that position where i am the person who looks out for people like the ruler I'm also the person who can fight and do these things. And you see these heavy decisions that they have to make, uh, you know, from, from two angles, because if you were just a president, a ruler or whatever, I think there are certain choices you can make, but if you're one of them, you're going to make that choice and you're going to fight in that war or, you know, and you're going to do these things. So, uh, and then lastly, both of them, their families just uh, full of the importance of family and their people. Mm-hmm but also with both sides just being riddled with so much death, whether it was, you know, their, their parents, other loved ones in the community. Uh, So there, you know, a lot of similarities there. So, woo, that's, that's some of the ones I went through any that maybe I didn't mention that. Yeah. So to me, there is like some, some ones that, I mean, probably worth mentioning, but you you all probably saw it because it thought it was obvious, but they, they both had plants that like essentially helped their people gain powers and the plants were like i guess germified from the vibranium that you know that came to the planet i just never thought about shannon like to, to for real for real, and this maybe just might be like me being too embedded in comic book culture i never thought about the fact that the meteor that struck earth with the vibranium could have went somewhere else mm-hmm. besides Wakanda. Like there could have been more than one meteor. The meteor could have split and hit two parts of the I just never thought about that. So that was, yeah, that like that was a great reveal. And they both have dope cash phrases. Wakanda has Wakanda forever. And Talokan. Talokan you so Namor mentions it once in the movie. But it's actually like his well-known catchphrase that he says all the time in comic books. And it's called Imperus Rex. It's Latin. I think it actually is like Empire King. But like no one really knows what Imperus Rex is. He says it all the time. And the one time he says it in the movie is when he's like about, it's like him and Shuri, it's like their last go round. And she's like, in Paris Rex, or he's like in Paris Rex, and she's like, "What kind of ever?" And the ship blows up. Mm-hmm. But like in Paris Rex is like a well-known phrase that Atlanteans and now I guess Telecans say. So they both got dope catchphrases as well. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, they both have similar fighting styles. They both use spears. Like Okoye and the general of the of Namor's army, they were pretty much like like equals. Like. They mm-hmm. fought similarly, like they couldn't really one up each other. I just found that fascinating that, you know, both these cultures, while they're different, they're like very similar. And yeah, man, I think that's it. I think that's all I got for similarities. Yeah, yeah. that's all I got for similarities. 
So overall themes that were picked up, I saw a few things. I'm curious on your thoughts on it. One was maybe just a little bit beyond the movie, which is this. Why do parents have to die in order for folks to become superheroes? Yeah. Especially in Marvel. Like, it was like, okay, you know what? We need a Black Panther. All right. Queen Ramona, you got to go. So Sherry can have enough comeuppance to mm-hmm. become the Black Panther. And if you look at all the Marvel superheroes, almost all of them had a parent or both their parents die in some way, shape, or form in these movies. And I just feel like, I don't, and they, you just talked about Namor and Namor's mom and what happened with him when he became like the protector of his people. Mm-hmm. Like, there's just a thing about parents and death that like spur folks to be superheroes. My wife had a hot take on this. And she said, what did she say? She said, it's because like the, that's like the last thing holding them back. Like the last thing holding them back is like their parents and like knowing that they have their parents to depend on and look up to. And so when that's gone, like they have like nothing holding them back to like fully be realized as like what they can and should be, which is a superhero. Mm. So that's, that's Shamel's take. But what, did you have any thoughts on that? Or did you notice that at all? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm going a, I'm to a make one jump and then jump right back. You saying <laughs> that, hey, I can only go so many episodes without mentioning Dragon Ball Z. And I look at <laughs> <laughs> when you say that, it made me think of like Gohan and the Cell games. Like his, his dad was dead. And, you know, it's yeah. essentially Dan. And even though, I mean, there were some other things holding him back, but like with his, his dad being gone. like his dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's a sensu being sell. What? Yeah, <laughs> to this day, man. But anyway, but yeah, sorry, I just remember right? that was like he unleashed like his full power, and it was like nothing's holding me back anymore. I I didn't want to do this, and my dad's gone. Everybody's gone, and you know. So anyway, it made me think of that. Jumping back, yeah, uh, a theme. It goes along with what you were saying, and and I was gonna even take it a even a little more specific, as we say, parents, specifically motherhood. Uh, that was mm. a theme throughout. Again, yeah, Queen Ramonda uh, dying, Namor's mom dying, how, you know, how he became after that. And then Nakia, I, I'm saying now, we, we hinting towards it, but, there, mm-hmm. but Nakia, <laughs> you know, as well, there's just this whole theme of, of motherhood and, you know, what that, what that means, the role they play, and and then to you know to your point like you're saying as well maybe when they're gone sort of what happens then and you know some mm. things like that so so yeah so i think there was, yeah. there was definitely a theme of motherhood throughout the movie and i and you you there was actually something else i picked up that you kind of just talked about too so i if you were to ask me what i think this movie is about i think it's about two things one is like kind of what you're talking about which is what do you become after you mourn Like what is, what is the process of like who you are before this death and who you become after? And I felt like that's what this movie was like showing us. Like there was Namor before his mom passed. And then there is Namor after his mom passed when his mom passed and they buried him and he saw how his people were treated, his, the land people were treated. And he was like, I cannot have my people exposed to these like colonizers pretty much and then he became the protector of his people and then there was sherry with like the death of her brother and then the death of her mom and like what she became not saying this by no way shape or form to glorify like what happens when someone passes that's very close to you in your life but there is a meta the like the mourning process is a metamorphosis and i think the story talks about like how you're impacted by grief and how it's a process. And there is another side of grief. And I think we were able to see what happens to some of the amazing people in this movie when they get to that other side of grief. So I thought that was one. Yeah. And then I think the other part is like a question, which is what are you willing to do to protect your people? It is a question that the Americans are asking themselves, the French people and like in the embassy, they're asking themselves, Shuri and Okoye and Ramonda have to constantly ask ask that question throughout the movie. Umbaku has to answer that question. And of course, Namor literally says out loud to Shuri, like, you just saw my country. 
what do you think I have? Now you know why I have to kill this scientist. Now you know why I have to go award to them. Like you, I have to do everything I can to protect my people. It is my job. I have to protect my people. So I felt like that was the theme throughout the movie, which is like, what are you willing to do to protect like what is sacred to you, which is your your home, your country, your people, your family, all that. So no, that's a that's a heavy one. And and it's like like to your point, there. I mean, technically, there is no wrong answer because it's, you know, it's all like within your purview. And, and I mean, I know, you know, for us, we can easily see, oh, no, going to war with the world, like, that's not the answer. But to that person, it's like, I mean, this is the correct answer. Because, again, you know, we look at, you know, Namora is like, if I don't go to war with the world, you all are going to try to strip us of our resources, enslave my people or do something. And just, you know, just for the world to be like, no, we wouldn't do that. He's like, history proves otherwise. Like, <laughs> <He's> like <laughs> but you have, and you yeah. did, and you did yeah. it again. Yeah. And then you did it again. And then yeah. you did it again. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if, if, if you will, if you will basically destabilize this place to get diamonds, like there, there is no telling what you would do to my place. If it's vibranium, you know, like, mm-hmm. or, or, or you're doing this to get coal, you know, or, or coal or gasoline. It's like, bro, if I brain him, you would, you would destroy us in a heartbeat. And the only reason you haven't is because you don't know where we're at. And yes. you're trying to do it to Wakanda. So, you know. Bro, so, Shen, I got to ask. Yeah. Do you think Namor was right? You know. That tells me everything right Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm like, I'm like Shuri here. I mean, I don't have an answer. <laughs> it's like, as I, as I nod. Yeah. Yo, I mean. You, you, you got to say, I, I mean, I, I think he was because what else is, yeah. Like what, what else is, is stopping them from doing that? Because you're like, I see you trying to do this to Wakanda and you know, you're failing at it because obviously, you know, they're stopping you, but that also brought up a point. There was just something I, that I had written down here. I think a, a slight, I don't know if this is a whole thing, but it's just something I noticed throughout the movie, that level of realism, because Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is exactly what would happen. Like when they were at the United Nations thing and then, you know, for them just to be like, so look, we're supposed to be allies here and some of your people, and and, you know, like, it's not like there are rogue people in this, like in France or whatever. They're like, oh, like we're going to do this. And they took their orders from somebody and like, we're supposed Mm -hmm. to be allies here. And we just caught your people. Here they go. They'll return safely back to you, you know? (laughs) We just caught your people trying to break in our stuff and take uh, vibranium. So and it just made me look. I'm like, that would be so real. Like if that. So like, real. Yeah. So like, real. Yeah. And and I mean, in this movie, what it was, I mean, it was France that did it there. But it's like, we know the U.S. would do that. The U.S. would do that. Any country, even though we're like, yeah, let's be allies. You got this thing that nobody else has. Yeah, let's get that resource, you know, and 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 you, oh, you're not sharing it, even though you're not trying to hurt us, you're not sharing it. Yeah, let's let's get that. <laughs> we're gonna go get it. Yeah, and if you were not the most powerful country in the world, we would have got it already. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts. And you're still trying, even though you know we're the most powerful country in the world, you're still trying to get it. That is amazing. The ignorance of the United States. <laughs> so I, I'll say this about Namor. He may not have been right, but the brother wasn't wrong. He was not wrong. So like, I think, I think he was, you know, similar to Killmonger. He kind of went a little OD with, you know, the murder and death. Like Mm -hmm. you probably just need to pull that back a little bit. But I got to say, every decision that Namor made throughout the movie made sense to me. Every decision, everyone like, hey, Wakanda, I want to be your ally. Like, I completely understand the power, the scope, and the decisions you all have made, except for revealing yourself to the world. That's the one thing I don't get, but the guy who did that is gone. So like, let's be, let's be partners. I completely get that. Telling them to get the scientists because it's their fault. I completely get that. Taking Sherry and the scientists, I complete, or I'm saying Riri, taking Riri, I completely get that. Like every single step, have, feeling like he has to retaliate because like they snuck into his country mm-hmm. and took the scientist and Shuri and having to like go back and like do what he did to Wakanda. I completely understand why he did. It. I don't agree, but 
but I completely understand why he did it. And so like, and then and when killed. Namora- oh, 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 I'm sorry. And I was just going to say, even when sneaking in and killed one of his people in the process, it's like, I can't let that slide. I, I can't like let that it. slide. Blood for blood. Can't let that slide. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, sorry, you kill one ahead. mine, I've got to kill about 20 of y'all mm-hmm. and the queen. <laughs> like, just <laughs> cold blooded. But like, at the end of the movie, when Nomura, which is like one of his generals, was like, I cannot believe you like bent the knee to Wakanda. It's like, what's going to stop them from like, you know, just like not exposing us to doing this, that, and the third? And like, Namor's rationale, I was like, man, this dude is a genius. He's like, look, the Black Panther is the most powerful person in the most powerful country in the world. And they have no friends. They have no one to turn to. Everyone on that, in the planet, on the surface, wants what they have and will do anything they can to take it from them, except for us. We're the only ones who don't want what they have because we already have it. We're their only friends. And one day the world's going to come after them and they're going to need us. And then we're going to do exactly what I want to have happen. And you know what? He's not wrong. Mm -hmm. At some point, this is going to happen. They don't have any friends. And the only person they're going to turn to is Namor. Because like the world will always depend on Wakanda for their resources. But like Wakanda can't depend on the world. Never had, never, no, at least nothing I've read. Have I ever seen one kind of say, I need help, and somebody came and helped them? Mm-hmm. Never seen that. <laughs> may, like, maybe Iron Man every now and then, or Spider Man, somebody may come through and be like, I'll help you, T'Challa, because mm-hmm. we're homies, but they ain't coming to help Wakanda. So, yeah, man, that's those are those are like some of the things I saw. Yeah, no, no, definitely. <laughs> and I think about again, mentioning that, that, that sort of realism. I mean, the fact that they said, oh, let's destabilize them. Like, I mean, hey, I just got to say it. I think it's been done before, you know? <laughs> like, yep. you know, our government being like, hey, let, let's let's destabilize what kind of like, that's how we're going to have to do the thing or whatever. Like, Director Dave Fontaine, um, Julia Lewis Dreyfus character, mm-hmm. literally says she dreams about the day where the U.S. has, are the only ones that have vibranium. She's like, I dream about that. And I was like, ugh. But you know what? That's what you want out of a, a director of intelligence for a mm-hmm. militaristic company in the US. You want them to fascinate about us having like the only power in the world. So yeah. evil, evil. <laughs> and, and, and I was going to say, you know, I know we're mentioning, mentioning some of the themes, but, but just mentioning uh, Namor. So villain wise, I mean, well, let's say, okay. It's, it's hard for me to say this. I hesitate there because I'm like, villain-wise, one, I'm going to get to it why I hesitate there. But he is one of the top three, and he might not be three or two. He's one of the top <laughs> three. <laughs> top three in terms of uh, what we would say, quote-unquote, villain. And for those reasons that you mentioned, because I think even now for me, if, if I want to be real, I think some of my top villains have been I mean, all coming from this. Uh, well, not just this, but Killmonger, of course, mm-hmm. Thanos, mm-hmm. and Namor. If we want to say Namor, mm-hmm. straight up villain. And I'm like, because all of them, you could see like, okay, I could see why you might want to do this, but it's still, but it's like, I don't think that's the right way to go. And it sort of seems like there's maybe some details missing with Namor. It's, somehow this movie showed every single reason why and i feel like there were no gaps and None. again because, yeah and again because because you know like you, you just mentioned some of the things but the fact that they showed it all you know they showed it all on camera like okay this is why all right you snook in here you killed somebody okay this thing happened when i was a kid this thing happened people told me this wouldn't happen this did happen you know like and and like i've been essentially they're like i've been tricked by wakanda even though you know it wasn't necessarily whole Wakanda doing that but somebody so every single choice he made you know like we're saying I'm like yeah I I see why you did that and again that's what I'm like I like I like Killmonger and Thanos a lot because I am like I see I see where y'all were going but for Namor it just seemed like there were no gaps like there were no gaps every single one yep you did that exactly because this happened and that happened so he was a rational leader. Yeah, yeah he, really <laughs> he was extremely <laughs> rational. He was like, look, I have to do this. This is why I have to do it. 
the one thing was like you killing this sister and you know what it's because we're black that's why i'm like i'm getting it i'm getting like it's like come on you don't have to kill her oh my goodness all right shannon the people have waited long enough we should stop teasing it let's talk about the thing that people are here for so yes we did wait till the credits came or to the well we we did wait yeah and we were there with sherry when she was sitting on the beach and then beautiful lapita i mean nakia (laughs) was walking with this like stunning young man at what point shannon did you realize what you were seeing was it until he said the words or was it like like at what point were you like oh lord this is chala's son so i think as soon as I saw her walking with a little, like a little guy, like I could tell, like, because they first showed them, they're like blurred in the background and then they're mm-hmm. coming up and you can see, okay, this is not a grown man. Like this is a little, a, a kid. As soon as I could see that this is a person much shorter than her, a kid, I was like, that's him. That's him. And my reason was because I was like, I, I knew T'Challa had a son in my mind. I just, I was like, I remember there was a scene where her mom, uh, Queen Ramonda, had said, there's something I need to tell you. About and, your and then, yes. And, and then there was like, you know, so much stuff happened, she didn't get to tell her. And then I was thinking too about time gaps because I was like, okay, so, you know, the five-year blip happened. And then this, I think, would have been, technically, maybe this would have been two years, maybe after the five-year blip, something like that. Yeah, one or two years after, yep. Yeah. And so, you know, I was just thinking about it. I was like, okay, they haven't seen her around. That's enough time to have a kid for a while. And, you know, like, cause, cause I mean, maybe I'm forgetting some stuff from the original, but I'm sort of like outside of her being like, oh, I do have dreams of like education and things with other like kids. I was like, you ain't really have a reason to leave Wakanda. Like nobody mm-hmm. was kicking you out. And there was maybe something you were trying to hide, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. So for me, I think it was you, you know, you start seeing all those pieces in hindsight, but I think what, what truly was like when she was walking with the little kid, I was like, that's gotta be him. That's gotta be him. And then, you know, when he said it, confirmed it. But yeah, now what about you? So essentially, if my timing is right, pretty much after he beat up Killmonger, Nakia was like, take me. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> like, you're the king now. Yeah. <laughs> and because like after that then like i think like maybe like a couple months after that is the whole infinity war so at that point she was probably either in haiti because she wasn't in infinity war so we can assume she's in haiti at that point and then of course he's gone for five years comes back and it's a year later so this kid's probably six years old and the math kind of like adds up so like you know the the year gone and then you know all the other stuff and you're right. It explains why we have not seen Nakia this whole time. But the like, like what I love about this is the kid's name is Tucson. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, if you know the history of Haiti, like one of the, I mean, I'm look, I'm not Haitian, so like, you know, my Haitian people, please do not come after me for bitching your history of your people. But Tucson Overture is like a, a legendary figure in Haitian culture. He was like, a, he played a pivotal role, if not the most pivotal role in like getting them free from French rule and French domination. And so like Tucson, when you hear the name Tucson, it carries a lot of weight with it in the Haitian community. And they named the kid Tucson. Like, how dope is that? And then, so like what I, just like you, Shannon, when Nikhil was walking with the kid, I was like, that's the child's son. I was like, I know, I knew it. I knew it for a fact. And I didn't even think about, Shamel had to tell me like, that's what Ramonda was trying to tell Sherry. I didn't even, I completely forgot about that. But mm-hmm. when I saw the kid, I was like, that's the child of son. But when he was like, so Tucson's my Haitian name. My Wakanda name is Prince T'Challa, son of King T'Challa. Shannon, like a baby, Shannon. I cried like a baby. I was like, <laughs> so I was like, there, 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 there. I was like, yeah, man, I was, I was weak, bro. I was like, this is amazing. We have the Chala back again. Like, mm-hmm. I just know, yeah. Anyways, so I'll, I, I'll go in a little bit more, but I want to give you a chance to, to yeah. 
Yeah. So from a movie standpoint and everything, I love this choice because, you know, we, we all see the argument going on now. Some people are saying this is what, you know, Chadwick Boseman would have wanted this. He would have wanted this. He wouldn't have wanted this. We're arguing. Do we literally like recast tomorrow? Like we pick another adult person and say, okay, this person is T'Challa and we just sort of, you know, just go for it like that. Do we keep Shuri as Black Panther? Do we just somehow start making this other direction? Like there's this whole argument going on. And I'm like, this to me, I feel like is the perfect choice because like, yes, we're not going to wait 20 years for the kid to, you know, to finally be, you know, however old and like a, an adult and this and that. But I think with this, there is going to be, you know, yeah, we see young Prince T'Challa. And I think by seeing him grow up a little bit, like, I mean, literally in the movies, and then also, I mean, it's going to happen in real life. It'll be like, we know him now. And this is his son. I, I think we can do this. I think you can eventually be that, that Black Panther, like, you know, literally in terms of the, the actor. And also, even from a standpoint, since we're really about to go into some weird time jump, quantum, you know, type things. I think they can speed up, like they can easily do something that like, quote unquote, speeds up that process. You know, like granted, yes, the, he's going to be however old he is, like in real life. But I think there's just, there's all types of interesting things they can do that'll be like, this is why it makes sense for however old he is when we decide to be Black Panther. Like maybe he'll be 13, who know, you know, whatever, however old he'll be. So I'm just, I'm like, this was a great choice. So yeah. And we, we have a future where there is still a Prince T'Challa marrying Storm. Yes. Which is all I want. All <laughs> I want, Shannon. So there, so there's a couple interesting things with this. One is on the MCU side, and one is historically with comic books. I'll do the historical with comic books first. A question y'all may be asking is, does T'Challa have a kid? In Earth 616 universe, that's the main Marvel universe, the answer is no. T'Challa does not have a kid. But in several alternate universes T'Challa does have a kid the most popular one is the kid he has with Storm his name is like Azari T'Challa something like that and he first appeared in I think it's a movie called Young Avengers or Next Avengers it's actually on Netflix and it's like all the kids of all the Avengers like have to like save the day and they're mentored by Tony Stark that eventually becomes a comic book. And so you see a child of T'Challa become the Black Panther. That is really like one of the few times you see a child of T'Challa. And most of the time it's T'Challa and Storm. So that's like the comic book history of T'Challa and the kid. But I'm noticing something with the MCU. And I think I mentioned this on a few episodes. Every single movie or show that's come out this phase, there's been a kid involved in some way, shape or form. Right. So like Thor, there was love. Ant-Man, there's Ant-Man's daughter that's there. And Scarlet Witch, there are her two kids. Like there's just like all oh, like there's like even She-Hulk. She Hulk was there and they and and Hulk's son uh was yeah, Hulk's son Scar, I think yeah. is his name. Mm-hmm. A Sakar or something like that. Like all there's just all I mean, obviously Clint Barton has a whole bunch of kids, but like he also has like a protege as Hawkeye. Like they're just assembling a whole bunch of young people. And like, yes, you're probably wondering, is there something called the Young Avengers? And the answer is yes, there is Young Avengers. They're essentially building the Young Avengers. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, or 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 there's something crazy that's going to happen in Quantumania. And we're going to like fast forward through the years or something's going on. But here's my real theory, Shannon. And I'll be quiet after this. They're, they already announced that there is going to be an Avengers King Dynasty mm-hmm. and an Avengers Secret War. And if it's anything like Secret Wars in the comic books, all those Avengers are taken away from this planet and have to go fight off in this other whole planet and do crazy stuff there. That means Earth's going to be defenseless. So who's going to have to protect the Earth? My assumption is all those kids, all those kids are going to have to protect the earth. So that's what my hot take is. I think we're going to have like a Young Avengers team. And I definitely think we're going to have 
a T'Challa come back or not come back, a T'Challa become a Black Panther. So that's yes. I'm like, again, that's pretty dope because like, let's be real. We were already locked into Marvel, but let's just say if we were, if there were any worries, look, look what y'all did. You just reset the clock. So just like it took what, 10 years finally for like Avengers to happen and they come together. Well, I don't even know if it was 10, whatever it was, but like for the first Avengers movie, look, you just reset the clock. So now <laughs> we're like, well, we can already see. Uh, and I mean, you know, this might not be that long, but we can already see, yeah, we've met all these sort of other Avengers and these young Avengers. And I don't really think any of them know each other. So again, that whole thing is going to happen. We're going to see some some solo movies, see you tied into here. And then eventually you're all going to meet. And it's like, just like starting the original Avengers over again, which again, that's pretty dope. I was locked in already, but now you, you know, <laughs> you, you just solidified why I'm locked in. So yeah. The big thing about this is though, they don't really have a lot of epic comic book stories, at least from my knowledge. So that's going to be a little tricky. They're going to have to they're gonna have to be a little creative there, but you know, whatever. We locked in. We go. We're gonna watch anyway. So, <laughs> all right. So, Shannon, any any last thoughts around just like you know the movie wrapping up, how it finished, how you felt after the movie wrapped up? Like, what were some of your takeaways? Again, it was there. There was so much there, and I I keep doing this thing of I think where I'm I'm bouncing between what are some things that look that look like in real life and like in the movie and to me something that I keep coming to as well is like allyship like how we you know are allies with each other and and again you know with a lot of my work outside of this diversity equity inclusion like I I look at it though I'm just like okay look here are two cultures two backgrounds or whatnot that have been historically oppressed and obviously we're seeing this sort of this world of hey what if we hadn't been oppressed and like how amazing we could have been just you know sticking together using our resources and not having this sort of oppression from the outside world oh colonize that that probably would have been a better yeah, word yeah yes, colonize colonize. Well. yes. <laughs> you know and i'm and i'm seeing this and it's and again it's pretty dope because i'm like in the real in the real world hopefully Hopefully, you know, we're, we're working together, uh, you know, from these things. And then obviously in the movie, yeah, you are seeing Wakanda, you know, and Namor, his, you know, his kingdom and everything like, yes, you know, they should be, should be allies. I'm like, they should be allies. I'm, it's funny. I hesitate there because I'm like, yes, they should be allies, even though it sounds like, you know, Talokan and Namor is still like, yeah, we plan on burning the world down. Like, <laughs> like that's still happening <laughs> yeah 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 that's that's you know like but but you know it's um but that's outside of like literally trying to burn the world down like you see how they are to, i'm like that's beautiful like that's allyship like hoping to you know to work together bringing your your two kingdoms together working together you know whatever it might be keeping each other's secrets whatever that is so that's that's just something that's like a sort of a lingering thought that um that i'm seeing and noticing and then outside of that, I've said this just multiple times. This movie was an experience. It was great. I feel so excited as I do for every Black Panther movie, which has been two. But every time I see Black Panther, period, whether it was Civil War, Black Panther, Endgame, Civil War, which I already said, but I'll say it again because that was <laughs> the first time I saw him and that was amazing. So, <laughs> but, but again, I feel excited for those who are uh of latinx culture and everything because again i think this is that ability of i know the way i feel about black panther and wakanda and so hopefully this is that feeling of they like there's representation there's this world here that you know that that they're saying and so uh, i just feel excited for them so that's amazing yeah man yeah man seriously i think that's one of my big takeaways too shannon and then the other one is like look I wasn't that excited for the future of Marvel. I am now. Like I am now. So I I'm like I'm just really grateful for Ryan Krugler. Like mm -hmm. he made a he made a great movie and I can't wait to watch this again. It it was a breath of fresh air. Like it really was and I'm hyped. 
Like I'm ready for the next phase. Like I don't know if Quantum Mania is the last movie in Phase Four or the first movie in Phase Five. Don't really care either. Mm-hmm. But like that's the next movie that's coming out, and like that sucker looks good. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know if you see any of the trailers. Oh yeah, that yeah. looks good. <laughs> so we get in this, and then we're getting that, and that's the trail that they're blazing for us right now. Mm-hmm. Like. I needed this. I needed this to, to be hyped for what we have going for us in the future. But yeah, man, if I'm assuming if you've been listening this long, you watched Black Panther, please let us know what you thought. Let us know what we missed out on. Let us know what you're excited about. I'm still going to get my eventual storm to child wedding. So I'm good over here. Thanks for checking on me. If you've been worried, but yeah, man, Shannon, any other thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, Nah, just again, I'm ex- I'm excited for this. Like you said, I'm I'm excited for the direction they're going because yeah, things are looking a little. Let's be real. I was gonna still roll with them, but things were looking a little dicey, especially with some of the uh, a couple of the the Disney Plus shows. I won't say any mm-hmm. names, but I was wondering how the direction <laughs> was gonna go with the movies and everything. But but no, this yeah, this reignited that flame and and like you said, yeah, shout out to Ryan Coogler give him all the flowers and money yeah and money and money <laughs> but uh but yeah no no i'm 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 excited i'm just excited all right well that is it thank you all for listening we have a new episode every month you can find us on all social media at pop Cult parent p-o-p-c-u-l-t-p-a-r-e-n-t you can visit us at www.popcultparent.com Email us at popcultparent at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate us, review, and subscribe. And as always, join the call. Peace. Yeah. Welcome back forever. <laughs> <laughs>